This time on Amazingly Terrible, we are watching Journey to the Center of the Earth, Episode 14, Return of Gulliver. Cover your eyes, quickly. <laughs> no, that was <laughs> good. There you go. <laughs> oh, that'll do. That works in three levels. You're listening to Amazingly Terrible, the podcast that asks, can the overwhelming loyalty of a duck... Help a Swiss German save his wards from a giant vampire Neanderthal. My name's Adam. <laughs> My name's Matt. My name's Mike. My name's David. And I'm Derek. I mean, the answer is yes. Yes. Although, I do have a little bit of background here that's going to possibly titillate or horrify you. Not too sure which. So, Can it be both? Should we marin in first? Probably would be both. Yes. Let's Marin. Much Marin to be had this week. Have today his... in today in Marin's. Today, today in a Marin's cup. <laughs> oh, God. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. That's horrible. How's everybody week's going? It's morning in Marin. I'm doing good. Chugging along. Chuggity chug. <laughs> My child uh, won't stop vomiting. Oh, no. Oh. Yeah, Did yeah, she it's... still have COVID? No, no, no. She she never really got COVID. Okay. Uh, or if she did, it was super mild. She uh, she's got some sort of stomach bug bug and like she will upchuck anything. That sucks. Yeah. Ugh. It's getting a little better, but it, apparently it's not as bad as her friend who has it really bad. Oh, so she caught it from her friend. Yeah, her filthy friend. Yeah. yeah. That happens. Uh, Are all children's friends filthy? Yes. I knew I, I was. I can confirm. Whenever I went to Adam's house, I made sure I would dab a little dirt on me on the when I was outside. Well, did you get filthy because you came to my house, or did you get filthy before coming to my house to bring the filth with you? <laughs> yeah, on from my house to your house, I'd stop off and roll in like a dirt pit. Oh, okay. Yeah, I think more of an exchange program. Yeah, yeah. I knew it was, I knew what was expected of me. Uh -huh. Yeah, to come you in. Get to my place, rub around in the salmonella, get that all over you, and take that back to your place. Rub it roll around. around yeah. yeah. Roll around being evil. That's what, always fawning over you. That's what your family demanded of me. Yeah. <laughs> That's how you made all that money. They're like, we need a villain, and you're it. Dude, that's perfect. Mm -hmm. That's why my dad loved you so much. Ugh. <laughs> Your dad hated me. What's that hippie doing? <laughs> that hippie. God. Uh, I remember, I remember, remember that. Saying, oh, yeah. yeah. I remember that. Yeah. There and him, uh, yelling on the TV about pinko commie bastards trying to do things. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I think that was mainly because Clinton was in office. So. I remember telling me to get a haircut and get a real job. <laughs> That's what he said. <laughs> that. nice. Wow. That's usually what he tells uh, Matt. I think he actually told everybody that. So. Uh huh. <laughs> He had some. Uh, he had a, a small amount of respect for me because I went into the military. But I think that, or I was no. like ROTC. But it was just very, very mild. He he loved your dad, and it was because you and I were friends. So I think that your dad gave him a discount one time. Oh uh, yeah, we were getting our car fixed, and since then, it, like. As soon as that happened, he was your dad was my father's favorite person. In Alexander. <laughs> I don't think awesome. he, I don't think he knew your last name, but he knew your dad. Like he was like, "Oh, yeah. what's Ernesto up to? What's Ernesto doing? How's Ernesto's kids doing?" So, yeah, wow, that was dad, actually earlier was on. Man. That that must have been like high school. Um, oh yeah, it, it wasn't until college when uh, whenever we went down to Nags Head and I was in ROTC. Mm that you know he said something along those lines but i don't i don't remember when that was well in all fairness he did stop talking to me for the most part until i got married and alex went into the military and when she went into the military that's when my father started like calling me once a week asking what alex was doing he didn't give a shit what i was doing he wanted to know what alex was doing wow so. wow <laughs> yikes <laughs> holy moly dude your dad does love the military. That he does. That oh, he yeah. Does. That was a big yeah. disappointment. No. What not I, to us. When I said, I don't want to go into ROTC. Yeah. You weren't a yeah. big disappointment. I mean, you were a good-sized disappointment, but... 
That was like an average disappointment. Robust, you know. Oh, like that. A girthy disappointment. <laughs> that's all. That's usually what I give people. <laughs> oh, so Derek, what have you been up to? How's the? Uh... Oh, dude, we're so fucking busy, man. Yeah, we're 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 literally so fucking busy. We're opening the second business, and the just <laughs> I'm trying to do my job. Tara's doing her job, and then open this third fucking business, and it's just. What's the what's, third business? Yeah, what's the third business? Uh, Tara is opening a teeth whitening boutique, Ooh, which wow. does yeah, which it's not bleaching because bleaching is a dental procedure. Uh, this is essentially peroxide with high intensity LED blue light. I am starting my own business. I am going to clean people's teeth right out of this house. Don't uh, don't you need to go to school for something like that? <clears throat> yeah, you do if you want to be a dentist. But I'm just going to brush people's teeth really hard and it lightens teeth substantially and so you don't have to be a dds or have a dental license to do it in the state of maryland and yeah so we've been putting that together uh tomorrow i'll actually be building out more of the studio and then next weekend we're doing a pop-up opening into a soft opening on the 25th of april into the grand opening in may uh so it's gonna be is going to be in your, uh, like, does she have a location or is it going to be at your house? No, we rented out a space and everything. That's what we've been working on. Is wow. Putting the, putting the thing together. Yeah. So there's that. And then uh, right now I'm trying to soup up my Steam Deck <laughs> while we're podcasting <laughs> while we're about weird 60s yeah. cartoons. How, of, how often do you have to get them whitened? So depending on how much your teeth are, are yellowed. So first off, Tara did mine. And I was like, I don't have yellow teeth, whatever. I brush my teeth, I floss my teeth, whatever. Yeah. Dude, the before and after is fucking shocking. <laughs> like, because you're used to looking at your teeth in the mirror and you see them as some shade of ivory because your teeth ultimately are ivory, right? And some people have a lighter shade of ivory. Some people have a darker shade of ivory. But when you actually get these things whitened, you look in the mirror and you're like, oh, my God, I got a mouthful of mint chiclets. Like, what the fuck? Like, <laughs> how dirty was my mouth before? And so I only did it halfway. So I did two two lightnings, two lightning sessions, as opposed to three, possibly four, depending on how heavily stained your teeth are. Oh. And uh, I'll send you guys a picture. It's bonkers. Oh, I thought you meant halfway, like you only got like the right side done. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I actually got one side lightened and the other side darkened. Uh, yeah, that's how that's I'm doing awesome. this. Well, that so. would set up like a good photo, though, to be honest. Mm-hmm. Be like before and after. What that? That's what we do. A hundred percent of this shit is like before, after. Uh, Tara is a fucking genius at marketing, so she's already, you know, we already have fucking people essentially lining up to to fill out the the essentially appointment book cool is it mostly yeah. social media She's using- yeah it's most it, this one's on instagram yeah she is just advertising like a motherfucker on instagram and it, reaching out to all the right people you know she started out she's like who would use this service and we just kind of brainstormed i'm like dude well the people who are going to want to do this are the people who are interested in jobs that require like not require but generally use headshots right so i was like all your realtors your bartenders your you know your beauty industry personnel people who make their money off of an image and what they project and I think she told me yesterday that there's an entire office full of realtors who are fucking booked <laughs> to come in. Yes, I was like, yes. you're going to be fucking kidding me. So, yeah. Awesome. Realtors. Oh, yeah, they got to have white teeth, right? By law. Well, if they want to be making that sale, right? You're going to buy a house from some guy that's got yellow stained teeth like he's a mm-hmm. cigar chomping Old coffee tiny. like yeah he uh, only does human. he just fucking smokes dark like robusto wrapper cigars and drinks <laughs> black coffee that's it and yeah. red wine those are the only <laughs> three things he puts in his mouth <laughs> jeez just swishes around the red wine <laughs> he just nice. he just gargles red wine and swishes it through his teeth <laughs> nice. just his maximum stain it. yeah so but anyways that's what we've been doing while supporting a full fucking flight schedule and having a 17-month-old small dinosaur that's trying to tear my house in part. So, 
So this, this time we are talking about Journey to the Center of the Earth, which is an American sci-fi Saturday morning cartoon that consists of 17 episodes, each running 30 minutes, and it was produced by Filmation in association with 20th Century Fox and aired on September 9th, 1967 to September 6, 1969 on oh, wow. ABC. So this was an ABC That's why it looks um, so old. Movie. So, or TV show, but it was two years that it actually aired, which is kind of crazy. Yeah. I don't know why they did that. I don't know why they split it up to be that long, but it might maybe it was like filler that they were just trying to put in in random spots. Who you, knows? Well, I mean, you don't think it got renewed? They didn't have they didn't have two seasons. They had seventeen. No, they they only had one season and it was seventeen episodes. Oh, that was okay. But they really made us wait, you know. Yeah. So, Journey to the Center of the Earth, the cartoon from nineteen sixty seven, actually was taken from the plot of the nineteen fifty nine film of the same title, Journey to the Center of the Earth. It's not based off of the 1864 novel by Jules Verne. So there are basically a lot of similarities that they pulled from the movie, and then they basically like went even further out to left field with uh-huh. what they were doing. So, Wait, that novel was from 664? Uh, 1864. Okay, 1864. okay, yeah. 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 <laughs> 664? 1664. Yeah, <laughs> that would have been old. Thing. That would have been old. That would have good, so. been a good been good reading for a long time. So essentially, the plot, since it is being essentially taken directly from the movie, is that they've updated the timeline here. But in the movie, it was eighteen eighties Edinburgh, and Professor Sir Oliver Lindbrook was a geologist from the University of Edinburgh. So he was actually like a proper university professor. Alec McEwen is a student, like in the cartoon, and uh, Jenny is his niece, like in the cartoon. Did they make it clear what age student he is? I have a, I have a lot of questions about his age. Well, he's... Oh, wait, th- they're not both his children? No, no they're no. not both his children, no. That's why there was so much sexual tension. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> in, in the cartoon, they made it seem like they were like kids because Alec keeps whipping out a slingshot. Like, he's yeah, that's what I was going to ask about because he's like, so. this guy's clearly like a college professor, and this is his student. Yeah, like, this is this his guy's student. in college, and he's whipping out a <laughs> slingshot. Mm-hmm. What's the like modern equivalent of that? Uh, bolo. Uh, a bolo <laughs> tie, <laughs> like <laughs> of a slingshot. The- uh, it, fidget like, spinner? No, I mean, I, I, yeah, I, I mean, like that guy who, like, you know, brings a samurai sword in. You mean like, in, like in our current school system? Yeah, I think like, it actually be somebody with like a vape pen and a, uh, like a <laughs> yeah, a, yeah, a, the... a tech techno track something, something that they can build from. Uh, they can build like a little robot based off of uh, Legos what? or something like that. Yeah. What? So in the movie. The way that the movie starts off is the professor, from his his student who is in love with his niece, gives him a piece of volcanic rock that when they break open, they find a plumb bob in it. And they're able to basically date it back to Arnie Sacknusum, who's the same character in this one, mm-hmm. from 300 years earlier. So this is supposed to be 1580. Mm-hmm. That they're chasing after this dude running through the center of the earth. That's like it's been three hundred years. Three hundred years, yes. Uh huh. And this so, guy's left perfectly etched. Exactly. In capital letters. Exactly. So they have to go to Iceland. The whole thing happens. They wind up finding their way, like the secret passage to get into the passage that goes to the center of the earth. It's off of the island Snaffeljochel. Snaffeljochel. <laughs> In Iceland. Try, try again. So, of course, they're not even going to... I can't pronounce it. It's, it's an Icelandic word. I can't actually pronounce it. No, I just, so. I just literally want yeah. to hear you say it again. And they are being they are being followed by Count Sacknusum, mm. who believes that as his Sacknusum's descendant, he has the rights to whatever Sacknusum found. Is this one of those uh, cases of, like, in the 60s, they used words that nowadays we'd never fucking use, like, boner? To describe things like we're gonna I name this guy Sack Newsome. Pro- well, probably, yeah. <laughs> like, I mean, Sack Newsome. That was like that was every third guy was named Sack Newsome in eighteen eighty. Yeah, what are you talking about. Yeah, dude. The, every, the world was lousy with him. 
So in in the movie, you couldn't get- swing a cat without hitting a sack newsome. <laughs> uh, I mean, you can't swing a sack newsome without hitting a sack newsome. <laughs> Hell yeah! So they wind up basically very similar to the cartoon. They wind up going to the center of the earth. They find a subterranean ocean. They construct a raft to go across it. When they get across the opposite shore, they they're like completely exhausted. They pass out. But they figure out that they're probably in the center of the earth because the magnetic force is so strong that it's actually pulling the gold out of their rings and out of their teeth. And uh, this is where the north and south meet in the poles, so all of their compasses are going crazy. Cool. But while while they're here resting on the opposite shore, this is when Sack Newsome, who's very hungry, manages to capture Hans's pet duck. This is the and- movie? This is in the movie, and eats the duck. <laughs> and, when, and, when, and when Hans, oh, when no. Hans finds out, when Hans, um, the, the the character that's like the the local who was helping them in Iceland, when Hans finds out, he goes nuts and kills Sack Newsom, and basically collapses him under a column of rock. And then they then find the city of Atlantis that has the skeleton of Ar- Arnie Sack Newsom there. And then they wind up finding a volcanic chimney that they just sort of ride the draft up to the top, back up to the top. And then they're hailed as heroes when they get back home. So this Where? cartoon takes place in the same uh, reality within the time period before the this, goose is in, eaten. I Ideally, I believe that that is the case. However, Hans is named Lars in the mm-hmm. cartoon for whatever reason. Oh, you think these are the second guys to go down? <laughs> maybe, maybe. But but it's specifically in the movie, it's Hans and his pet duck that wind up like rescuing them and like help them out and get them on the adventure. So that's the whole reason why there's a fucking duck in this cartoon. It's not it's not because of some sort of cartoonist duck fetish, although it might still be some sort of cartoonist duck fetish. Who knows? Who knows? Yeah, so. when they introduce the duck in the opening credits, I like <laughs> yeah, I had yeah. to rewind and watch that part again. <laughs> no, that's <laughs> when that's when the tears started. Uh-huh, uh-huh. <laughs> Uh, it was be- I mean, it was beautiful. As soon as that happened, I I knew what we were in for. <laughs> so I'm I'm gonna do the the opening for. Also, it's op- not a duck. It's clearly an Egyptian goose. <laughs> yes, yeah. I mean, yes. it does it does not look like a duck, but so I'm, I'm, just, gonna, I'm gonna do. I the just opening. love how every single character in this cartoon looks like they belong in a different cartoon. <laughs> yes, 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 and they yes. sound like they belong in a different cartoon too. Yeah. Like it's not even like there's no cohesion anywhere here. So. I'm going to do the opening, the opening intro to the cartoon. Long ago, a lone explorer named Arnie Sack Newsome made a fantastic descent to the fabled lost kingdom of Atlantis at the Earth's core. After many centuries, his trial was discovered, first by me, Professor Oliver Lindbrook, my niece Cindy, not Jenny, Cindy, <laughs> student Alec McEwen, and guide Lars and his duck Gertrude. But we were not alone. The evil Count Sack Newsome, last descendant of the once noble Sack Newsome family, had followed us to claim the center of the earth for his power-mad schemes. He ordered his brute-like servant, Torg, to destroy our party. But the plan backfired, sealing the entrance forever. And so for us began a desperate race to the earth's core to learn the secret of the way back. This is the story of our new journey to the center of the earth. Yeah. Bum, bum, bum. So that's the the end. That's like how everything sort of ties. That's the beginning. <laughs> that's, that's the beginning. beginning. I yeah, I love it. I love that we know the whole deal. There's no questions. I get. <laughs> I get the setup. Now the duck is fully explained because it's from the movie. Who knows how it got in the movie? But you know, whatever. Whatever. Okay. Yeah. So shit was weird back in the day. That's how it got in the movie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, like, <laughs> dude, have you watched some shit from back in the day? Like, look no further than well, this show. Yeah. They were probably yeah. cast the casting the movie, and they were like, "Okay, this character, he's got like a pet parrot. Um, where's the parrot? We don't have parrots. What do we have? Ducks. All right, racism. We have racism. <laughs> we have racism. <laughs> oh boy, you think this is against racism ducks. and cigarettes? That's what we have in the fifties. Yeah, that's all we got. That's all we got. Vinny, get that racist duck in here. That's right. Yeah. It's beautiful. Open this episode up with our main characters. 
and they uh, come across a giant man with birds circling around his head with his giant dog, which is obviously looks like a uh, pit bull. The man is dressed in a loincloth, so obviously it's supposed to be a Neanderthal. However, the pit bull does have a uh, modern spiked day collar, yeah. spiked studded collar for some reason. I mean, spiked collars take back to Roman times. Like, there's plenty of, you know. Yeah. Well, there's enough. lots of range in there. Yeah, but it doesn't go back to, like, the Neanderthal time, so. No, it looked distinctive. Like, it, it looked 1950s. <laughs> yes, yes. It was a cartoon dog. Yep, it was a cartoon dog. And, uh, David, what did you say? It was a pit bull? It's blue. It's yeah, blue, it's a blue yes. pit bull. A blue pit bull. They uh, take a few moments. They're stunned by this, and uh, the pit bull turns and growls at them, so they run back. And Cindy says, how are we going to get across... The professor says, there's a crevasse. This is so abrupt. Do you think that this was the end of the last episode? I, you something? gotta assume so. You gotta assume this is... Because we're just like, bam, we're right there, giant. Yeah. You know? Yeah, which is weird, because this episode doesn't really end like that. No. It doesn't no. set up a scene like this for the next episode. Honestly, this episode seems like it could have been, like, the end of the series. <laughs> <laughs> And I was hoping it was, but no, there's another episode. There's three more episodes after this one. So. Oh, thank God. And, and we're going to watch every single fucking we're watch one every of them. Single one oh, one. boy. <laughs> so the professor suggests, hey, let's go back to the crevasse. We'll go down and see if there's a passage to get around this giant. And as they're going down the crevasse on a rope, they are actually um, observed by Sack Newsom and Torg. Yeah. Who both make comments about how like they're going down, but they might not necessarily come back up. Yeah. And Adam, I was did, like, Sweet. did you like this? Did you like this scene? Did I like this scene? Yeah. Did you like this animation? Did I like this animation? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. This was fantastic. This was yeah, the best. Yeah. It was beautiful. Good. Because you're going to see it like 20 hundred uh-huh. more times this episode. <laughs> I'm, t- I'm telling you, when I saw this animation, this is when I was hooked and I was like, I'm in it to win it, brother. I'm here. Nothing's going to get me out of it now. Yeah. This is, we're in. There's no physical contact between them and the rope. Nope. None, none whatsoever. But Sack Newsome, upon seeing the rope attached to a, a stump and having access to that area, makes comment of them not being able to come back up. And my first thought, as I'm sure your first thought was, is, oh, they're going to go cut the rope. Yeah. Why didn't they fucking cut easy, the rope? Easy, easy. No, 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 no. Well, because we're not villains. We don't think the way villains do. Like, they, <laughs> they have, Clearly. they've got a plan. They just throw a bunch of giant rocks down at them, right. which, do, which does nothing. It just sails right past them. They get a little freaked out. They're like, oh, shit, what's going on? The professor winds up uh, lighting a torch for some reason. Yeah, he's carrying the torch. Like, it, he's, let's be clear. He's carrying the torch on the rope. Yes, yes. <laughs> yeah. He's essentially burning the rope as he's going down. Exactly. And, like, holding it really close to the rope. <laughs> yeah. And all of these motherfuckers are basically just, like, like they would have rope burn all over their hands the way that they're, like, sliding down this thing. Yeah, yeah. They're not climbing. They're just sort of sliding, so. Yeah. Uh, then, for some reason, there are little people. Little putians. No, no. The cartoon. We watched it recently. The, uh, the Littles. The littles. <laughs> the littles, yeah. So there's a bunch of Littles. <laughs> A bunch of littles in, like, Roman armor. Not even Roman armor. It's like... I think it's like a Syrian. It, it, it's yeah. Like, yeah, it looks more Mongolian. Mongolian, maybe. Yeah, Mongolian. that's what I was thinking. But Syrian. Yeah, let's say Syrian. So we got we got little, uh, little Assyrians shooting arrows, which are like little tiny beetles, and throwing spears at, at the folks as they're trying to go down this uh, rope. Which was pretty... This was pretty fun when they started getting needles stuck in them. Yeah. And but it it's also like... like annoying. Apropos of nothing, but suddenly there are just littles everywhere. Everywhere. And they're dropping stalactites on them. They're, like, trying to hit them with catapults. Yeah, yeah. Like, it's a little nuts. They got, like, siege weapons and shit. Yeah. They wind up, like, throwing rocks and, like, shooting. uh, Alex shoots a slingshot at Uh, them. Ah, yes, the infamous slingshot scene. Yeah. And this this breaks them up, so the, the little Assyrians run away, basically. They continue to go back down the rope. No big deal. And this is when, like, the order of operations is, or the order of uh, descent is very important and also not really oh being God. told us at this point in time. <laughs> Guys, because we're, we're six minutes in. <laughs> and, 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 and Assyrian cuts the rope. 
Yes. And for some reason, it only affects Lars and the duck. It's because so. they were at the bo- they were on the bottom. They were leading the uh, the rope. Okay, so they were on the bottom leading the rope. Then, like, how did the rest of them get down when the rope was cut off? Right. Exactly. So. Also, like, what a stupid little person. Yeah. Like, it does, cut, does, cut all the rope. Doesn't make a whole lot of sense. But he then gets hit in the head by a rock, knocked unconscious, whatever. The For some reason, the kids and the professor aren't around Lars, doesn't know where he is. So then the professor decides to wander off to try to go find him. That's because this, this episode is a fucking geographic mystery. It's it's like, just a night. It's a geographic nightmare. Like we have no idea where anything yeah, n- is. There's, there's no, no space cohesiveness to it. Yeah, there's no. It's not clear where we are ever in relationship to anything else. Everything looks exactly alike. It is uh, a background artist wet dream. Like it's just like <laughs> I had to do nothing. I could. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> you can just sit around, smoke all day, draw a couple lines. Right. Damn. Right. Hey, this paper's black. Let's film it. Yeah. So. The the Assyrian Littles essentially lure the professor into a trap, which consists of a a steel spider web that goes across a passageway. And he, he the professor literally says, it's a spider web, and it's like steel. I can't break through it. And my first thought was, like, is it sticky? How the fuck do these little creatures make it sticky? And <laughs> You know the answer to that. We know the answer, unfortunately. Ugh. <laughs> <sighs> gross let's move on so he gets captured by the little assyrians and the kids wind up running away i think they wind up getting i don't even remember they get one up uh attacked by the giant or the giant neanderthal finds them or something yeah yeah because again like it's not clear where any of this is so the giant's just there it's he's just there for some reason yeah yeah so they they run away they wind up finding lars and at this point in time lars has been uh tied down by the uh the Assyrian Littles. Right, because this episode was named Gulliver, so... Yes, exactly. So they had to have that imagery somewhere in there. And uh, this is when Gertrude, the, the doc, sees her master again for the first time, gets so excited that she has to fly over and start humping his neck profusely. And just, like, gets right up in there and starts grinding on his chin, basically. <laughs> okay. Distressing. I think you're reading into this wrong. It is the only time that any of the characters express emotion. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, okay. And you, I like that that cuts back to the kids and they're literally dead eyed. Yeah. <laughs> just, <laughs> just staring. Staring at the stuff because it's like nuzzling into his neck. Yeah. Unmoving. Yeah. Okay. And then for some reason, the giant shows back up. And the giant's on one side of them, the dog's on the other side of them. They get trapped in between the two. Lars winds up doing the classic, I'm fighting a giant open mouth creature by shoving a giant stick in its mouth and preventing it from being able to close its mouth. Mm-hmm. While Gertrude the duck flies up and starts pecking at the giant's head to distract it long enough for them to get away. Ah, uh, classic duck move. Classic duck move, exactly. And this was really like when I was when I was like, why the fuck is it a duck? Ducks can't peck really like the, what would the ducks duck are aggressive as shit yeah I, I i would not want to be attacked by a duck they're real creepy duckies ducks are what me makes me believe that that the dinosaurs were birds like that totally makes me believe it not ostriches yeah <laughs> no ducks are th- there's a reason we shoot them with shotguns <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, to prevent them from evolving. Yeah, it's actually it's easier to hunt them with other guns that would be less painful, but we do it out of pure spite. <laughs> yeah. We we then wind up cutting to I think the giant winds up capturing Lars, so he just like picks Lars up, basically. Okay. So we cut to uh Sack Newsom and his henchman standing on a cliff somewhere, apparently looking out across a large cavernous space to a light off in the distance and talking about how that's going to be Atlantis. It's a light. It must be Atlantis. Yeah, this is one of the weirdest bits. Have they, like, always been following this light? Is this a new thing? Because they they don't seem to make a... I don't know. It it feels like they do this every episode. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I I don't know. Maybe they do do it every every episode, but honestly, it seemed like it was just for this because they're just, like, trying to get close to the end. (laughs) Right. Like, like they're the like, light becomes an issue later as well. So, 
Oh, it does. Well, well, yeah, because like when they get to the ocean, they then like look across the ocean. It's like, oh, that's the light. That must be Atlantis. And then the the Assyrian littles are like, oh yeah, we hear tale of a city beyond the ocean where the yeah. light comes from. But that's later. Now we have the Assyrian littles. We have uh, them pulling the professor across. Uh, sorry, Lindenburg. They have prof- they're carrying the professor. <laughs> it's not, it's, they're not Lindenburg. <laughs> Lyndon Brook, Lyndon Brook, <laughs> Lyndon Brook. Lyndon Brook. He's Lyndon dragging Brook. Uh, those p- Nazis out of his closet. <laughs> <laughs> but they they have him strapped to a giant. Compared to them, a giant cart that they must have built before the at, horse. Well, well, yeah, but like, <laughs> why would they have a, a cart already built to a larger scale? That's not to the size of the other creature they're around, because that's way too small for that. Rather, it's like in the in-between space. It doesn't make any sense. But they have him strapped to this car with giant wheels compared to them, and pulling him along. And Lindenbrook like, perks up, and he looks around, and he's like, what's going on? And then he, he somehow manages, even though he's laying parallel to it, it's like essentially carved into the wood right next to him. So he, so he would not be able to see it laying down. Mm-hmm. Manages to see the initials AS for, was it Arlen Sack Muncher? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Sack. So. yeah. Sack Muncher, that's even better. They're, they're in there. It's um, They put it in there. It just stands for another season. That's what they're chasing. <laughs> <laughs> I just assumed it was Adult Swim. It was yes. just a precursor. Yeah, yeah. But no, uh, he, see, he sees AS inscribed onto... Uh, piece of wood that he looked at and i think this is actually the recurring bit i'm pretty sure in every single episode they see an a and an s and that keeps yeah. telling them they're on the right track because everybody knows that 16th century explorers always carve their initials into everything they come across whenever they're traveling around yeah so. i mean those those dudes were basically you know early graffiti artists yeah they were just doing their tag that's right that's right and I don't understand why Arnie Sackmuncher didn't use his middle name <laughs> of, like, uh, Salish. Because mm-hmm. obviously his initials should be ASS. Yeah. Arnie Samuel Sackmuncher. He's just putting his high score initials all over the world. Just like, I, I carve ass into everything. High score. That's right. That's right. I'm the ass. I'm the ass Sackmuncher. And there's some i think talking to himself that takes place but the 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 giant shows up and when the giant shows up and sees the uh assyrian littles he gets excited and drops lars for no reason yeah so now lars has gone away he goes ape shit yeah and he he pulls out a net and starts netting up all these little assyrians or assyrian littles and like seems to be having a real like fun time with it we also get a real scale problem here this is the beginning of it, yes, yeah. yes. Because suddenly the the Assyrian littles appear to be like close to the same size as our human. Uh, yeah, they're like a third of the size. That they would like come up to our knees, and that's yeah. not really what but, is de- yeah. depicted. Previously, they looked like they were about like two inches tall. Because yeah. I would be very afraid of a whole bunch of knee height. Sweaty oh, Assyrian geez. dudes. Yes, I, I would be scared of that too. Like that's, the closer that's they get to my genitals, the the more scared I get. So. <laughs> my genitals. Yeah. Oh, geez. There's a scene with the giant like holding them, just in his fist. Uh-huh. You can see like legs like sticking out between his fingers. Yeah, like random body parts just sort of sticking out of between. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Like he like just sort of squeezed his hand through like, like dough or something. Yeah, like he's yeah. playing pl- with play doh. Yeah. At any rate, the uh, giant winds up seeing the the kids again, Alec and uh, Cindy, and he then gives up on the Assyrian Littles and chases after the kids. And the kids wind up running into a cavern somewhere that's not big enough for the uh, uh, giant to go into. So that the giant suddenly now has a giant... Uh, like telephone pole size spike that he's now jamming into the cavern yes. trying to poke the kids. Where do you think he had that? <sighs> you don't want to know. Yeah, yeah. No, I think we do. It's nature's pocket. Nature's pocket, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> nature's pita pocket. Mm-hmm. 
they wind up uh, talking about how they need to just distract him so like they can get out or whatever. And the duck winds up flying out again and starts dive bombing the uh, the giant. And then eventually they wind up knocking the giant out by a well placed uh, slingshot shot to a giant boulder that just happened to be sitting on a ledge directly above the giant's head for no reason. It's kind of ironic that he's bothered by the duck because in the first scenes they show like three vultures circling his head. Yeah. And he's just chilling out. Sitting there. Yeah, it doesn't yeah. care. Yeah. But we wind up getting another Lilliputian moment where uh, the normal sized humans wind up tying down the giant in the same fashion that Lars was tied down earlier. So, and this is when the Assyrian little show up and they're like, oh. You're going to be friends of ours. We thought that you were working with the giant. Uh, but now that you defeated him, we could tell you all of our secrets. Mm -hmm. All of the wood that we built came from across the ocean. It was driftwood that showed up. We think it might have been from a different civilization. We're from across the ocean as well. One day the ocean, uh, what was it, like they got hit by a tidal wave or something, and they wound up drifting out to sea and landed here on this side of the ocean. Right. So, shenanigans. So this is when they come up with the idea of, oh, okay, Lilliputian, show us where the cave is, where you found this wood to build this stuff, and where the ocean is, because apparently the ocean's in another cave, basically. And we'll start to put together something, because we're pretty sure that this is where uh, Arnie Schumacher sunk Sackmuncher ran off to. Mm -hmm. And um, that's going to be where Atlantis is, so... And they're like, okay, yeah, we'll help you. And then they turn around and suddenly the giant's gone because in another scene, we saw Sack Muncher cut him free because they wanted to have a bigger distraction for the giant. And this is when we intentionally split the party where the professor says, okay, kids, go with the Assyrian littles, find the driftwood and help them build a raft so we can get back right. over to that city. And I'll take care of the giant with this satchel that I found somehow. This that for some reason can, contains gunpowder. Yeah. <laughs> and he knows it instantaneously. He picks it up and he says, it's gunpowder. It's gunpowder. Exactly. It's like our uh, our sack of unlimited holding in our D&D &D game. Right. Just put yeah. whatever the fuck. Yeah. We oh, look, what's in here? An aircraft carrier. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. I think technically it's supposed to only hold 500 pounds, but, uh, you know. That is true. Matt's uh, a very kind and generous game master when he's high. I just don't <laughs> want to do the math for encumbrance. <laughs> <laughs> That's basically my secret. So giving me the uh, pouch of holding at the very beginning was actually more of a game master trick than it is a uh, reward. It's more like, hey, all of you guys have that, and that explains why you can carry everything. Right, yes. Don't bother me. Because <laughs> otherwise you'll, get, you'll start asking me questions. <laughs> Can I carry Question. this? Can I Questions carry... that I'm not prepared to answer. Yeah. Can I carry this? <laughs> like, oh, God damn it. I know you can't. <laughs> so they come up with a plan. The plan is we're going to go to the cave of Driftwood. We're going to lure the uh, dog and giant or whatever else we can lure into that cave. Then we're going to spread the gunpowder everywhere, light it on fire, and that's going to create a sustained flame with all of this driftwood and burn the uh, creatures out, basically. Yeah. So they want to, the dog follows them in there. They want to, like, going through all these brambles and whatnot that is the driftwood, apparently. And they wind up setting it ablaze, and we get the craziest fire animation. Yeah. That I. I, I'm still not exactly sure what they're trying to convey with this. Yeah. It turns on and off. It turns on and off, yes. But also, they're in it as well. Yes. Like. This is one of the few times when this was, I was like, this is honestly a legit, that's a good idea. Like, that uh, might work. And <laughs> it's frightening. Like, it is scary. Yeah. Well, especially for creatures that have lived under, underground their entire lives, you know. Yeah. And they, the, the flames are, like, all over everybody, and uh, everybody, all, they're all wigging out. Yeah. So, and this is, like, a smaller cavern where this is happening, apparently. And they get the dog trapped in there, and then, like, the, the giant is standing on top of the rock facade that that cavern is inside of. 
and then just starts like throwing boulders around at the people. Yeah. And at the same time, like the Assyrian littles have built the rafts and they have built two different rafts for some reason. The kids run out and get on the rafts. Sack Muncher and his henchmen run out to help with the rafts too. Lars is like chin deep in the water for some reason, just sort of chilling. And this is when the professor takes the full, the remaining pouch, the full pouch of dynamite or full pouch of uh, gunpowder, throws it into the cavern where the flame is happening to blow it up and collapse it underneath the giant and thus take care of the giant. And somewhere between them escaping with the assistance of Sack Muncher and his henchmen and this end point where we're ending, they have managed to lash both Sack Muncher and his henchmen to one of the rafts completely with their legs hanging off of the back of it. And they make a comment about how, like, oh, they're going to help to to the littlest to the Assyrian littles. They say to them, "Hey, these two are going to help you get home." Yeah. While we go this direction towards Atlantis or towards the shining light across the ocean. And it's kind of inferred that they like somehow turned them into outboard motors because they kept kicking to drive the raft forward. Yeah. Why didn't and they just stop kicking? Exactly. They were very <laughs> cooperative in this entire endeavor. So. Right. But at the same time, with the size of the Assyrian littles, I really was like, oh, it's probably just like 10 feet over there to get to their old settlement. The oh, ocean yeah, yeah. is like nothing. So like, let's they're going they'll like, just go over there and then get untied and then be able to catch up in like five minutes. Yeah, they're so, like going the length of a football field, you know. Yeah. That comment about them helping to get out there does elicit our favorite part of every cartoon. Idiots laughing at nothing. Yes. Because uh, everybody yes. just laughs. And, ha, 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 ha. I mean, thinking about it, maybe they're kicking because some of those littles are inside them. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, God. Yeah, what the hell? They're, down, they're in their stomachs with spears. Just jamming. Just being like, yeah, you keep keep kicking. Keep kicking. Stomachs. Right. Yes, in their stomachs. <laughs> That's where they're getting jabbed. Not in um, their taint. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, right. Or in their colon. Oh my god. Something got up in there and it had a spear. Yeah. It's over, so, guys. It's over, boys. Guys, scene, guys, guys. I've, I've got a colonoscopy scheduled for Sunday. Can we stop <laughs> with these kind of jokes? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh, sorry, Mike. It's It'll okay. I didn't tell you guys about it, but now that you're saying that, it's kind of giving me a little... Uh... <laughs> no. <laughs> You it's making it up me a little. A little it's uh, tightened me up a little bit. So <laughs> yeah. you're not relaxing enough. <laughs> Let's talk about something else. Uh, so I did like in this scene too that, that Gertrude the Duck was sitting on top of uh, Sack Muncher's chest and looking at him, and it just makes me enjoy the fact that later on in this cartoon, he's going to eat her. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. And yes. then we get a beautiful sequence. Showing, previewing what's going to come up on, on other episodes. Mm, yeah. Yeah, and, they're like, we're two minutes under, fuck it, just run the sizzle reel. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> it's fucking sold me. Yeah. It sold me. Uh, electric dinosaurs. Well, it starts with mummies. Yeah, it, yeah uh, so, uh, mummies, yeah. ice yeah, skating. It's, it's all action. Yeah, yeah. Electric dinosaurs, like a, no I think there's a Naga in there too somewhere. There's like, there's an, evil, sort of like an evil ice, ice skater. Encased. Yeah. A bunch of like Egyptian imagery too. Yeah, that's associated with uh, everything's frozen. A bunch of stuff. Love it. I think probably my favorite part of this entire outro bit though is the fact that it does show the professor with a gun. It's like motherfucker, you've had a gun this whole time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we could have solved all of these problems. A long time ago, you take out Sack Muncher, her, his henchman, probably the dog, maybe the giant Neanderthal. Right. Or just give him, give him Sack Meister to eat. Yeah. Well, I was actually like, as I was watching this, I really was like, why the fuck is it? The whole point is supposed to be that Sack Newsome and his uh, henchmen got trapped in the underground with them. Right. Why the fuck at that point in time did you not go to the people that are the quote unquote good guys? who, like, have a moral compass and be like, hey, we're all in this together. Let's join forces. We're going to, like, help you guys out. And then, and then as them. soon as you get to Atlantis, just slit their throats. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Classic. Classic. <laughs> Classic. 
As soon as you see those with that Atlanta skyline, you know it's throat slitting time. <laughs> so, uh, what did everybody think? I think, Mike, what you need to do is just put a bunch of nerds up your butt and just sort of shock the attendants that are doing the uh, colonoscopy. Same Z's. Just freak them out. Uh, don't do that. You'll just be like, oh, yeah, you got nerd colon. I, I won't be doing that. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Yeah, don't listen to those idiots. Um, this is a fucking masterpiece. <laughs> of, uh, of what? Of just random nonsense. Just throw them together. It is... It is so lazy on every level. Every oh, level I, of this is oh, yeah. fucking lazy. The characterizations, the voice acting, the uh, the characterization of a, a foreigner, every, yeah, the yeah, writing. Yeah. It felt like this episode that some guy came in and be like, hey, why don't we just do Gulliver's Travels? Okay, sure. Send it to the animators. It's written. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Benny, genius, don't got to do nothing, let's kick off early. Yeah, let's and, travels. and then every scene, Done. they're just like, yeah, just milk this forever. Like, this is this is the meat of the episode here, guys. Yeah. I did notice that when they switched to rotoscopy, suddenly they, they don't have the budget for color anymore. Yeah. Mm. And you know they use that running at us animation every episode. Because they used it for every character. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they did. They definitely did. One thing that I failed to mention also was the uh, the giant Neanderthal-looking guy. He he did have fangs, and that's the reason why I called him vampiric in our intro. But he, for some reason, <laughs> he had fangs. I guess just to try to make him look more menacing, they gave him fangs. He's from a different cartoon. He's like he's yeah. a cartoon character attacking them. From a different cartoon, yeah. Character design is lazy. I Sorry. mean, but that was essentially the 60s animation that was not essentially Disney. And it, just, it, just, it was bad. Just like copy and paste this plot from this movie. Bam, done. Kids haven't seen it. It's an adult movie. <laughs> it's and it, kids and it, and it was in 10 years. It's yeah, fucking yeah, genius. Yeah, it was ten, 10 years ago, exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's fucking genius. It's beautiful. <sighs> you know? Yeah, and like going back to it, looking to the looking, I'm watching the intro again right now. Like the garb of all these people, the stuff that they're wearing is kind of like nondescript outfits like it could very well be like no motherfucker that is not true no you we know are what they in did? fucking turtleneck is... heaven they ripped off fucking... <laughs> oh that's true that's true the kids they, yeah, they the ripped kids off early star trek yeah. like they've got color-coded jerseys they've got tight-fitting pants they've got the fucking <laughs> boots on like they just true. ripped all of it off and but yeah. everyone has got the most luxurious turtleneck and, and but ed lars does sound like chewbacca I love to grow a good turtleneck. Do you think it was just colder back then? Yeah, probably. probably. Well, well, yeah, global, global warming. warming. Kind of, yeah, yeah. Yeah, do you, yeah but, I mean, but that's a more recent thing. Like, you know, it's just been invented. Yeah. Well, <laughs> Al, Al Gore, 2000. That's right. Just since 2000. Yeah. Yeah, we, we didn't really talk that much about, like, the racist uh, depiction of Lars also, right? Like, his, like has like a weird like they call him german in this but it has like a weird swedish accent yeah and he's got uh, those like crazy eyes or crazy yeah. eye, eyebrows and he, he seems like a total idiot he's, also, he's like one his... step away from popeye really yeah in terms of the, the character mm. i could see that he's quite broad yeah i guess he was just supposed to be like the muscle in essence, I don't know. Like I was assuming this was going to be like the the Brock Samson to uh, the uh, Doctor exactly. Doctor Venture. He basically is. So yeah, there, yeah, there's a lot of influence here that went that went into the the Venture Johnny, Brothers show. Well, a lot of influence here that went into Johnny Quest that then went into the Venture Brothers. Hmm. So also, do we have Johnny Quest on our list? Actually, I totally. Oh uh, man, uh, he's on my I'm list. Sure, we do. It would he's, be an extreme he's, oversight. He's my hall pass. It would be. He's your hall pass. <laughs> you got eliminated. Yeah, I picked Johnny Quest as my hall pass. Well, I'm looking right now, and uh, we do not have Johnny Quest on it. We have Johnny Bravo. Ugh. Shit. Uh, the How worst. How do we not have Johnny Quest on here? Somebody done put down the, the wrong Johnny. Yeah. yeah. Something's not in alphabetical order. <laughs> Something's not enough. You, you, did you find uh, it? Let me control F this bitch. 
so I, I had a little bit of an issue with watching this in the sense that my week has been long. I've had a lot of shit going on. Yeah. Every time I tried to watch this episode, I fell asleep. Oh, like, yeah. I, I honestly did not watch this. I did not see this all the way through until today. It yeah. was only because I had it playing while I was driving my car, which is not the best way to go about it. But it kept me awake. It kept me, kept me awake. So. Um, uh, <laughs> you were driving the car watching this. Yeah, you don't do that? Just like you, you have the <laughs> no, phone directly that's a in front of your face while you're. Uh... <laughs> Mean. <laughs> oh, no, no, I had it. I had it like this. I had it playing in the car while I was driving, so I like heard it, and then I was like, "Okay, this piqued my interest enough." And then when I got back to work, I watched it like two more times. I was like, "Okay, I actually got through this." I didn't actually write anything up for it, pretty much at all, until I just got home right before we started the podcast. Well, there's so. like, yeah, there's there's not a uh, complicated plot. A lot no. happens. Yeah, a lot of shit my first happens. thought was. I can't stay awake through this, so this must be boring. When I finally did watch it, I was like, shit, this is insane. Yeah, this yeah. is just fucking insane. Like, there's no other way to go about it. This is insane. And then, like, I think on the second or third watch, I was like, this is this is amazingly terrible. This is exactly what we are. This is like, th- we put a duck in a cartoon <laughs> that belongs to a fucking Swiss-German guy. <laughs> this fighting a giant like what the fuck is this thing that we're watching yeah yeah and i and i i fell in love with it all over again so yeah yeah i fell in love i knew it it's it, it's just it's the perfect amount of nonsense for my for me it's it's i love how like weird it is but also how totally conventional uh-huh yeah it's like oh let's go down this rope oh we're being attacked by uh assyrian littles okay whatever we'll accept that immediately and not have a total freak out of like right what is existence why are there little <laughs> things and giant things and this makes no sense <laughs> exactly uh i love i love the movie starring adam where every plot twist is an existential crisis <laughs> <laughs> well you gotta get there eventually right yeah yeah but yeah i loved it i loved it derek what'd you think you gotta you gotta be the uh grounded person here and all yeah this. yeah yeah Shower us in your negativity. (laughs) 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 Okay, from from an objective sense, like I'm not a big fan of some of the earlier animation that we watch, just because. No, it's garbage. It's garbage. It's garbage. Right. Like the only the only people who are really putting out good animation, what, what was the movies at the at this point in time? Is it amazingly terrible? Oh fuck yeah, it is. It's got all the tropes. Like, 100% of them, it's got bad animation, the same fucking character models, the same, yeah, yeah. essentially the same sequences, voice acting is dog shit, like, but I don't want to watch it again, because it's boring. <laughs> so, I'm going to give it a thumbs down. Oh. Like, it's it's not something that I watched, and, you know, I like I said, I've been busy as hell this week, and I watched it actually once before we, we went and talked about it, and it wasn't one of those ones where I was like, I'm so excited to talk about this, I was like... I'm just looking forward to having three, four beers yeah. and bullshit. Yeah, it's shitty. I love that. Get rid of it. Did you watch it with the kid? Did the, did, the kid did the kid have any? No, she she wouldn't have been interested in this one. It's it's not flashy enough. Yeah, yeah. Like, the, the only pizzazz was the god-awful fucking pastel fire that they did. Yeah. Best scene in the episode. Yeah, yeah. It was terrible. I mean, it, was, it was the turning point. And, and the thing that it had also still to keep it in with, with our theme is idiots laughing at nothing. Like, as soon as I saw that at the very ending, like, everybody laughing, I was like, the bad guys paddle away. I I, I really did have the moment of, like, Matt was right. We should have just named this fucking podcast Idiots Laughing at Nothing. Because that is <laughs> literally how every one of these fucking cartoons in. Yeah. At least, well, re- at least recently. It's Yeah, you, you gotta know, tell, let the audience know when to laugh. Apparently, yeah. yeah. Well, that that goes back to like my longstanding hatred of laugh tracks. It's like this is where you're supposed to laugh. We're laugh gonna tracks, insert... cell animation. What do you not like? What do you? Yeah. What do not you... dislike? What I I don't <laughs> not dislike nothing. <laughs> Damn. So there, Word, it's just... brother. No, I I agree with you with with laugh tracks. Like I I I have gone back and tried to watch. Um, like different shows from the past, like different comedy mm-hmm. shows from the past, and every time there's a laugh track, I it, it 
Oh, it's great. Turn, turns me off immediately. Like, I'd be like, why yeah. am I watching this? I need to yeah. get away from this. I like it. Well, I don't. Well, who cares what you don't like? I care. So, so are we all voting to keep this? Oh, uh, I yeah. I thought we were we all getting we rid of get it. Your, we didn't get your uh, feedback, David. Do you love it, David? David. Do, do, yeah, I, I could not tell what was going to happen next. You So you were on the edge of your seat. It, 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 <laughs> kept, it yeah. kept me guessing. Yeah. You were saying yeah. you paid for the whole seat, but you only needed the edge. Oh. Ooh. <laughs> yeah, no, get rid of this shit. No. <laughs> it's so good. <laughs> Well, I think okay. So, so let's vote here. Matt and I, I'm pretty sure, are voting to keep it. David, and, I'm sorry, uh, Mike and Derek, you guys want to get rid of it? Yeah, also, there's no. Yeah, there's I just no don't want to watch it again. It, okay, it, 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 it wasn't something that I was like, I want to keep this because it's so trashy. I just was like, Ugh, we, we gotta, to like... we have to watch Sack Muncher eat that fucking duck <laughs> <laughs> slowly <laughs> in front of Lars. Making it's a, him it's watch. a full episode. Of the, yeah. soul. the cooking, the prep uh, process must. Uh, he sources greens. Oh, I... <laughs> and he's like talking the whole time, like yeah, he's yeah. on like a. Uh, it's a important show. to honor the environment and pick only the freshest ingredients for your duck. Oh, while well, Lars is just sort of tied up, forced to watch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's kinky. So I think really it all comes down to you, David. David, do you want to uh, help us out with this? Faux tension, David. Steal oh, oh I, I definitely want to keep this. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice. Yeah. Great. All right, so we're keeping it. Oh, it's torture. All right, nice. So, what is the next bit of business here? Okay, well, I know you're not ready for this, Adam, but uh, you need to do a redemption. An insurmountable pile of wonderful awfulness. Oh, I'm ready for it. I would like to add Johnny Quest to the list. And nice. Put it, the, put it into the actual rollable section. So Sounds it's, it's good. Yes. I'm just writing it wrong. Now, Matt, what changes would you like to make to the list? I have no fucking clue. Oh. Why does Matt get changes to the list? Because David said uh, so. Well, we just did the edit on the street sharks and i don't think back actually picked anything <laughs> oh uh, shit <laughs> i just i just blathered on that was a bit of an oversight on my part sorry i didn't even catch that oh. when i was editing it <laughs> fuck you want to take something off or put something on i'm assuming you want to take off johnny quest <laughs> <laughs> oh oh boy no, because I actually do want to see Johnny Quest. Let's see. I'm going into the dreaded S's. There's a lot of shit in the S's that we get rid of. I don't know, man. Our This list is getting pretty good. Yeah. There's a lot of garbage on here. <laughs> <laughs> that there is. That there is. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. I, I was totally off base oh, when earlier... Earlier, when I said this fed into Johnny Quest, which fed into Venture Brothers, because Johnny Quest was fucking four years before this. Really? Yeah. So this ripped off Johnny Quest. You know what? Okay, I found one. I found one that we can't we can't continue to allow to live. Uh, <laughs> oh boy, here we go. Uh, I am eliminating number thirty-eight, Cowboy Bebop. <gasps> fuck how you. dare you fuck you how dare you <laughs> it's fine it just means we'll watch it wow later. you Son can burn in bitch. hell so you know what i agree with that because cowboy bebop is not amazingly terrible we don't need to be reviewing yeah. amazing shows on this show this is we're not just, our we're remake. just reviewing cartoons yeah we're not reviewing amazingly terrible cartoons like yeah. if we want to change our name to like cartoon talk Cartoon talk. <laughs> cartoon talk. Hey guys, hey, it's Cartoon Talk. Hey, welcome. But, welcome <laughs> we're not like hey, those sissies to, over at Cartoon Talk. Welcome we're to Friday reviewers. evening with the boys. Hey we champ, welcome to Cartoon Talk. We're going to be talking about cartoons today. <laughs> that sounded really good. Actually, we've also, we've also <laughs> sworn off things like alcohol and THC. Yeah, yeah. And we embrace Jesus. Oh. <laughs> that doesn't sound very fun anymore. <laughs> exactly. Kill uh, Bebop. Have you have you have you wow, embraced thank you. our Lord and Savior, Veggie Tales? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. 
Also, it's Veggie Tales on this, which probably yeah, we gotta watch Veggie Tales. I've never seen it. <laughs> Veggie Tales is amazingly terrible. All right. <sighs> nope. Yep. Yeah. Johnny Quest, September eighteenth, nineteen sixty four to to March eleventh, nineteen sixty five. Mm-hmm. Twenty six episodes, one season. That's it. That's all he needed. You know, he got in, <sighs> he got it done. So influential he is. Ah oh, man. This list, honestly, it is getting really good. Laser Tag well, Academy, you, fuck yes! <laughs> you keep Academy. on, you keep on dropping everything that people want to listen to, though. Oh, like you got, you got fucking Academy. rid of Pokemon, Cowboy Bebop, the Mighty Orbots. Ah, oh, it, it, it's beautiful. I, oh shit! I should have, I should have put a bump of the night back on. What did I do? I didn't we can't have on. Mission Hill on here. I got to get it next time. I'm getting rid of this. Okay. Shit. Nobody remind That's him. A... Don't remind him. Don't remind him. <laughs> <laughs> Love Mission Hill. It's one of my favorites. Okay, let's move on to Reverse Red God. We want cartoons 26 hours a day. Okay. Reverse Red God. Everybody's favorite. R and R. Because they're like, this is almost the end of the episode. Like, <laughs> we make the same joke every single Shush. fucking time. <laughs> yeah, seriously. It's getting old, man. <laughs> Tell me what is index 1706. Oh. It's whoa, way up there. 1706. It's about the middle. Ooh. Oh. What the fuck is this? Pigsburg Pigs! Nice. Exclamation point. Pigsburg Pigs. What the fuck Pigs. is this? <laughs> oh, I'm excited. Do you think this is like a response to the Disney afternoon, maybe? Probably. Oh, I got it. Pigsburg Pigs! Now you need to update the... You need to update the list. It's not Pigsburg Pigs? Oh, shit. Sorry. I'm... Oh, <gasps> you guys got all excited no, over it now. No, sorry. is it? Oh, did we get uh, Pirates of Darkwater? <laughs> no, we didn't. It's still Pigsburg Pigs. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> no, it is. <laughs> is oh, on? I'm sorry. Next highest. What? Oh, never mind. I'm sorry. Next highest. Right. Yes. Pirates of Darkwater. <laughs> yes. Oh, Fuck yes. Hell. Finally! I thought Pirates Chicken was screwing with us. <laughs> that would have been amazing. Love that. Oh, Pirates of Darkwater. Oh. Yeah, we've we've only buffed this like 20 times. Like, oh I have, my god. Because... <laughs> we keep on sinking way too many resources and trying to watch I, this thing. I feel like so. I, this is, for Mike, for the way Mike felt about, um, what was the show that we watched where you, you wanted to finish it? Oh, uh, Legend of Zelda. Yeah. That oh, the yeah. way he felt about that, I feel about this. It's like finally, yeah. I get to go extinguish a terrible <laughs> part of my childhood. I get to destroy a childhood memory. Well, then I, f- I wholeheartedly uh, support I mean, part this. Of, uh, really, that's going to be the case. Yeah. I, I remember loving this when we were kids, and like you and I even having like long conversations about like what's going to happen next time. This is a serial episode. Yeah, what what's happening? Where? And then like. I'm pretty sure when we're going to go back and watch this, it's just going to be like, what the fuck were we smoking when we were kids? This is... Oh, we were children. I mean, ridiculously like... horrible. Yeah. I'm but, sure, I'm sure Mike is. can tell you, one thing you learn from having kids, they're idiots. David, <clears throat> you know <clears throat> that uh, both, uh, both uh, Matt and I are like jonesing for this one, so... Uh... Yeah, yeah. First off, first off, uh, it's episode number nineteen. Is that right? Nineteen out of Whoa. twenty-one. Nineteen, 19 out, of out of twenty-one. 21. Jesus oh. Christ, we're so close to the end. Oh, jeez, man, you're edging us. So, episode nineteen of Pirates of Dark Water is going to be. Give me a second. Oh my God. Oh, Wait, it's season two. They actually had two seasons. Nice. Episode nineteen, Sister of the Sword. The crew was forced to go to port to buy supplies after Conk destroys what they had gathered. There, Ren bumps into Sola, Io's sister, who is a pickpocket with an eye to go hunt a treasure located in Arcana Island, the most dangerous island in Mur. When Ren and Lowe's refuse, I'm sorry, Ren and Io's refuse, she steals the crew's gold and the compass and gets Conk to help her while Ren chases after her to retrieve the stolen compass. Oh yeah, I remember now. There was the compass that pointed to the thing that they were trying to get to. That's right? the whole plot. The whole you plot just gave us the whole plot. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Thanks. Appreciate nice. that. Awesome. <laughs> you piece of shit. So, 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 <laughs> so, Sister of the Sword. So, who's it going to be? 
David? Is it going to be neither Matt nor I? Well, Adam, you're so good at doing that summary. It's, uh, <laughs> Damn, Adam, you were having a bad nice. run, buddy. Yeah, I just had to go prolific run. That's all. I mean, you're doing it's a great right. job, but you're having a rough run here. Yeah, no, I'm just worried that it's going to come down on me now. Hmm. Oh, yeah. Well, you're going to get the next thing, which is going to be like Laser Tag Academy, probably. <laughs> I'm excited about Laser Tag Academy. I want I want more 30-minute uh, commercials. All right. On a future episode of Amazingly Terrible, we'll be watching Pirates of Dark Water, episode 19, Sister of the Sword. But next time on Amazingly Terrible, we'll be watching on a very special episode, <laughs> Stripperella, episodes one and two, name redacted. <laughs> oh boy Stripperella not excited at or interested in that at all not in the least bit yeah not. well who's in, the one who also, added it I think there might be like a live action component to it too which is going to be kind of weird so is there I don't know I just I, randomly I saw a clip of something that has Stripperella in live action people in it and I didn't know if that was actually from the cartoon or if that was something they tried like an advertising they tried to put together for it or whatnot so my name form has been mike for asmr randy savage i have been adam uh i also have been adam it's derek congrats you're getting recruited to nam it's derek congrats <laughs> you got you got the derek this episode very surprised i haven't heard any duck puns this is david <laughs> David, how normal. David. David. Amazingly Terrible is produced by David and Adam. Music by Josh Woodward. Send your email to monotonouslyterrific at amazinglyterrible.com. Beauty and the Obese. Stripperella, right. episode one and two. Beauty and the Obese. That will be episode 69 of Amazingly Terrible. Hosted by Mike. Oh, Mike. It's too late to uh, cancel your tickets. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> was, was it dumb to pick this as our first live show? No. Yeah, I think it was... Uh, we bought out in a whole auditorium to do this actually yeah we we, we set up um we're supposed to be doing this at SakuraCon in uh seattle actually oh don't you dare so, go to an anime convention without me that'd be mean <laughs> no this is this is what we're doing this live action like we we got one of the uh breakout sessions from the uh convention we got one of the convention halls to uh, do this uh, yeah rented it all out ourselves so we're like, we'll, we'll get if we buy all the tickets, we get all the money when we sell them. It's brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> nice, genius. I see. It's we got genius. nothing riding on this. That nothing genius. at all. Yes. Yep. Yeah. So uh, it's all riding on you, listener. You have to buy <laughs> all the tickets. That's right, all Dan. of them. You got to buy them all, Dan. <laughs> all of our self forts are riding on this, Dan. If you love us at all. Ha, 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 ha